Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Today I'm going to be going over the basics of the Creation Kit. So this video is aimed at total beginners to the Creation Kit and I'm going to expect you to have already gone ahead and downloaded it. So if you want to know how to get started downloading it, where to find mods and where to upload mods, then I recommend that you visit my main website and I'll leave a link in the description below that will explain quite a bit for beginners and give a few nice hints, tips and tricks. So we're just going to take a look at the overall user interface of the Skyrim Creation Kit. Now we've got our object window, render window and cell view here. The object window is what contains all of the items within the kit. This is what contains actors, uh, items, special effects, actual world data, stuff like uh, landscape pieces so that's where you'll drag and drop items into the kit now the cell view down here this is what's going to list all of the cells and the current cell that you are working on and this is where you can edit cells and change details on them the render window will let you see your work and see what you are creating so this is where you'll have like your landscape or your interior cell this is where you'll be moving items around and editing things this is the the one main thing that you'll be using throughout your time on the creation kit and the first button on this nice long toolbar up here is like a little folder button here so if you just click on that this is where you need to begin and you'll see a list of master files and plugin files so a master file is the main database for all of the data within Skyrim. This holds all of the objects, as I said, actors, meshes, textures, everything. It holds everything. And these ESP files, plugin files, these are going to be relying very heavily on the master files for all their data. So these just save all the data for the changes and additions that you make to the game in your mod. So the ESP is essentially your mods file. Now you may or may not have some ESP files there. If you've downloaded a few mods or any mods at all, then you will have ESP files in there, plugin files. And you should already have at least two ESMs master files uh, in there. Now the main master file that we use is the Skyrim master file. So I'm just going to focus on modding the vanilla Skyrim game, base Skyrim game for now, no DLC and to do that you'll have to double click select the Skyrim ESM there. No need to select the update ESM although you can if you want to, it's entirely up to you. But do note that if you double click the ESM then your mod will be reliant upon the latest version of Skyrim but it usually is anyway. Now if you already have a mod and you want to edit that, so when you come back to your mod to, to uh, mess around with it to make changes or additions, you'll have to double click that mod and be sure to set it as an active file. If you don't set it as an active file then it will load the mod, but when you make changes it won't keep those changes or some will get dropped off and forgotten about, so you need to make sure that you set it as active. So we're just going to start a brand new mod from scratch and you do that just by selecting that ES. M file and you go ahead and click OK now mine uh, might look a little uh, glitchy this can take quite a long time depending on the specification of your machine mine doesn't tend to take too long and you will most likely get at least one or two error boxes show up so I'm just gonna see one of these error boxes show up and show you what you can do so as I said it can take a little while and it usually gets to this point here where it's loading files initializing and you'll get an error pop up very soon there we go so if you get any errors like these don't worry it's nothing that you've done just click this button here yes to all and you'll probably get a few of those so I'm just gonna wait for that to load okay so once the kit is loaded up you can see that we now have a full list of interior cells and world spaces and you can gain access to all of the resources from the game so miscellaneous stuff items, misc items, everything, actors, they're all listed under there now. So we're not going to go ahead and actually make a mod in this video. I'm just going to show you what these these sort of do. You can now see how the cell window works and you click on a cell and it'll have a list of all the items that are in that cell. And the object window has all those objects and the render window if we just go and open up a random cell now, so I'll load up one of the warehouse cells which you use to grab quick resources from 
and you'll get a lot of these warnings throughout the kit where you'll have to just click yes to all it's usually nothing um, nothing that you've done but if you do get errors after you've made your own cells interior cells or done something in an exterior cell sometimes they can prove quite useful and they can give you little hints to what you've done if you've gone wrong somewhere but most of the time it's, it's not something that you can really fix and it's not usually a problem so as you can see we've loaded an interior cell and our render window shows all of this this wonderful stuff here so when you want to put an item in you literally drag and drop it in it's obviously got to be a, a physical item if you're dragging and dropping it in some things in the object window aren't actually physical items but you just drag and drop things in and that's how it works so the next video I'm going to go through how you use the render window what hotkeys we can use on the keyboard and other general things so how to place things in how to rotate things and I'll go through the gizmos and everything I'm just going to quickly go through some of the toolbar options for the remainder of this video you can obviously select the time of day now the time of day will only really take place and you'll only see changes in exterior cells and you'll want to make sure you've got this button here which is the sky button tick so the sky is visible and it's actually making uh, changes showing changes to the time of day otherwise if you're changing the time of day and the sky option isn't selected nothing could be changing you won't see anything now as we go along we've got the save button when you click save it should automatically direct itself to your Skyrim data folder so you shouldn't have to worry too much about finding where your mod saves and if you just look you'll already have some ESPs in here if you've downloaded mods or edited mods before then they'll all be in here and you'll know that you're in the right place now you'd go ahead and you'd give your file a file name doesn't matter what it is give it something relevant to the mod obviously and then you can go ahead and save and then that would be the ESP that we spoke of earlier that which you'd have to double click on and set as active so saving is really important I recommend that you save quite regularly because sometimes the kit can crash for no apparent reason and you can lose quite a lot of work and sometimes you don't know what you've now placed down or what crashes can be quite quite reoccurring on the creation kit unfortunately so we have to deal with that you've obviously got undo and redo you've got a button here to change the preferences of the creation kit I wouldn't recommend that you mess with that if you're a beginner wait until you've got a little more experience and you know what you're doing so that's for more detail really you've got the snap to grid angle here which I'll go through in more detail in the next tutorial when I do gizmos and stuff and the other really common buttons that we use is the havoc button and the effects button effects allow you to see things run in real time in the render window as they would in the game so you'll see a waterfall actually in animation the havoc button allows us to see how items would drop physically in the world when you click on them and you have the active and this button here the light button you can click on and off it just turns off all the effects and brightens the room up so you can see what you're working with if you're in a dark environment so that's really useful and I'll go through some uh, quick hotkeys which will be useful for that in the next tutorial we've obviously got the nav mesh button there that is a tutorial all on its own that is for getting actors to walk about the cells correctly and know where they're going and I'm not going to go into any detail for all of these buttons on the toolbar here so that's really the basics of the creation kit I hope you found this video helpful please leave comments let me know what you think and check out all my usual anti-social websites and my main website I'll leave links in the description below, below sorry so thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.